Welcome to this FlexiJet Stone software orientation video. Our goal for this video is to give you a brief introduction and overview of FlexiJet Stone. After installing FlexiJet Stone in FlexiCAD, on your desktop you should see a few icons. Some of these should include the FlexiJet software update tool, as well as FlexiCAD and FlexiJet Stone. FlexiJet Stone and FlexiCAD are truly the same software on the back end. Therefore, a file measured or created in FlexiJet Stone can be opened in FlexiCAD and vice versa. We suggest that for stone and countertops, you begin with FlexiJet Stone. If you don't have a folder on your desktop called FlexiJet Practice Files, open the FlexiJet Software Install and Config tool or the FlexiJet Software Config tool. And on the Setup tab, press the button for Practice Files. This will place a folder with some practice files on your desktop. We'll begin by opening up FlexiJet Stone by double clicking the icon on the desktop. Every time that FlexiJet Stone opens, the General Preferences window will appear. This window gives you the option to make some changes and verify some settings when opening the software. There's a couple areas to note on this window. The first is at the top, under System Settings and FlexiJet Mode. To connect to the FlexiJet 3D2, or the FlexiJet Next Generation, we must be set to FlexiJet 3D2. You'll notice from the drop-down menu that there are some other options available, including the FlexiJet 3D, or the original FlexiJet, and we can also operate in FlexiCAD mode, which is in Software Only, or Standalone mode. CAD preferences can be adjusted, but if you've installed the software with the FlexiJet software install and config tool, your default settings should be a good starting point. And one note, on the bottom here, we have the option to choose between PC mode and touch mode. We're currently in PC mode. This button at the bottom will give us the option to go into touch mode. So you'll note if I press the touch mode button, the buttons become bigger and we are now in touch mode. And the button at the bottom now gives me the option to choose to go back into PC mode. So typically when you open up FlexiCAD or FlexiJet Stone, you'll take a quick glance at the settings and press OK to continue. You may see a license window open up at this point. If you have not received your permanent license, you'll have the option to use the evaluation mode of FlexiCAD or FlexiJet Stone. This is the full version of the software with no limitations on any of the functions. Simply select the bottom option to evaluate FlexiCAD and FlexiJet Stone and press Next to continue. After opening up FlexiJet Stone, if we are in FlexiJet 3D2 mode, it will look for a connection to the FlexiJet laser. If we aren't connected to the laser, a window may appear saying that it could not connect to the FlexiJet. No further action is required, we can simply dismiss this. It's just letting us know that it looked for a connection to the FlexiJet device and did not locate it. We're going to begin by opening a file. We'll go to the File menu, which is this round F Stone button on the top left. Drop down to the Open command. And from the desktop, we'll choose the FlexiJet Practice Files folder, and let's select Practice 2. You'll notice that a preview of this file shows up here, and we'll click on OK to open the file. We won't save the changes to our untitled file here, as we haven't made any changes. Now I'd like to show you around a few areas of the screen. On the top of our screen, we have the top control and ribbons. These are sometimes referred to as tabs or ribbons, and these are where the different functions of the FlexiJet software are saved. You'll notice that we have a ribbon for FlexiJet, ribbon for measurement, draw, etc. Now, as we select these different ribbons, the section on the left here, the quick access, remains the same. Only the functions on the right are changed. The FlexiJet ribbon has functions that relate mostly to controlling the FlexiJet device itself. Therefore, when we're not connected to the FlexiJet, some of these functions will be grayed out. On the measurement ribbon here, we have more functions that are to do with setting up our measurement or our drawing project. You'll note that some of these buttons are a single button where the, the, there's a single function accessed by clicking on either the text or the icon. However, other buttons, such as this new folder button, have a two-part structure to them. The top icon is the main function, or new folder. With this little arrow indication at the bottom, this lets me know that we have a drop-down menu here. If I click on the drop-down menu, I have additional functions available under the primary function of new folder. So not all functions have this, but if it's indicated with an arrow and a horizontal line between them, we have the option for additional functions. In the area on the left of the screen, we have our Project Explorer. This is where we organize our projects into different sections. In FlexiCAD and FlexiJet Stone, we typically refer to these different sheets or pages as folders, where they contain a plane or, or a group of measurements that are grouped together. So we currently have the kit or kitchen folder selected here. 
As we can see on this main canvas area, we have a kitchen represented in front of us. I can tell that this is selected because the text is bold. So to select a particular folder, we'll simply click on the text of that folder. For example, choosing the up main bathroom. Now the check boxes next to these folders serve a different purpose. The check boxes allow the visibility of a different folder while we're looking at the current folder. An example of this would be if we're in the upstairs main folder and we wanted to see the kitchen at the same time. Now, as you can see, there's very little value in this project to seeing these both overlaid. These are separate rooms and they are measured completely separately. However, this function becomes extremely powerful for us when we're considering projects like shower walls or fireplaces, or even a raised island bar over a lower island section where we want to see how the two elements interact with each other. We'd like to show you a little bit of how to navigate. In separate videos, you can learn about the differences between touch mode and PC mode and some of the advantages to both of those options. In this video, we're working in PC mode. So I'm using a, a simple mouse with three buttons and a scroll wheel in the center. The left button allows us to select. The right button opens up contextual menus. For example, if I click on an element here, it opens up a menu allowing me to do things. And I can simply click off in the distance or press escape to deselect on my keyboard. The scroll wheel is a very powerful tool for us to navigate around on the screen. I can zoom in and out by zooming up and down on this. Note for users coming from other software such as AlphaCam that this scroll direction can be reversed and general preferences, which we accessed while we we're opening the software, can also be accessed by going to the file menu and clicking on the general preferences window. In addition, by clicking and dragging with the scroll wheel, we can pan our view around the canvas area here. So a combination of zooming and panning allow us to efficiently move around the canvas area here. Across the bottom left of the screen, we have the properties where if I select an element, the properties of that particular element are visible to us. For example, the pen color. Now that this element is selected, we could even bring this up and change the pen color to a different color for us. Again, pressing escape to deselect if we so choose. The bottom of the window, we have the command window. The command window is almost a ticker that reads us out what the software has just done and what it's expecting for us. So if we select a command, such as offset, the command window on the bottom of the screen will read that we've initiated the offset command and it's now prompting us for the distance. I'm going to cancel this command and show you an option for viewing this, which is kind of a crossover with our touch mode. Under File, General Preferences, and CAD Preferences, scrolling down a bit, we have the option for PC mode calculator input. I've selected that option here. And now I'll call the offset command again. And you'll notice in this case, the command window at the bottom still reads the same information, but we are now prompted for where to input the numbers with the calculator input on the screen. I can still type if I'd like on the screen, for example, let's say two inches and press enter on the keyboard. If you have a touchscreen device, you can tap on the screen or use your mouse for input as well. Now it prompts me what to do to follow through this command. Select the object that should be offset We'll take this front line and select the offset side. We'll choose down below here, clicking confirm, right click, escape or cancel to end that command. So we've now brought you through the various sections of the page here. We'd like to give you a tour around where to find some of the elements in a particular project. Clicking over to the FlexiJet ribbon here, I'm going to click on the drop down under take a picture and choose the option for display photos. Now these are pictures taken with either the FlexiJet smart remote app or the tablet. And these are site pictures or job site pictures that show us the areas that were measured. In this case, we can see we have a vanity cabinet. We have the FlexiJet measuring another cabinet, another area, and we're into the kitchen here with a little bit more context. Now the intention of these pictures is to give us a kind of a context where these areas sit in reference to the overall. I'm now going to click over onto the view ribbon and click on this option for show measurement points. These points represent the points that were measured with the FlexiJet. Now simply by taking the mouse and hovering over top of one of these points, the picture associated with that measurement point, as in the picture of actually where the FlexiJet measured, will appear on the screen. You'll note that if you hover your mouse slightly over top of one of these lines, it will show us the properties of these lines. For that reason, we recommend that to view these pictures, you take your mouse and hover in from the outside, just hovering over the, the edge of that point to see that particular point. It's worth noting that these pictures are very lightweight, they're compressed down for reference. Your average picture runs between 10 and 20 kilobytes. So we have the value of these measurement points 
combined with the job site pictures that we talked about and saw earlier. Now we've looked at some of these different folders as we come through. Here again, we even have a cut list where this user has decided to copy and paste some elements onto a single page and add some dimensions. Perhaps they're exporting this for further processing. Coming back on the Project Explorer here though, we have this root folder. We call this sometimes a root folder or project folder. This is created automatically for us when we select the countertop function or on the measurement ribbon here, we have a button for a new project if we choose to do this manually. I'm going to click on that folder and show you this. Now, the purpose of this root folder is to show us multiple folders or areas together in three dimensions. In this particular project, there is no three-dimensional information. Each one of these countertop areas is simply another two-dimensional area. Uh, example of where we might use this would be an island with three waterfall sides. There could be value for us in seeing all three of those sides along with the top together in a single place. You'll notice in this area though, if I click on this folder, we just see all these areas kind of stacked up. This is normal. There's nothing 3D about this particular project, so it's normal that we see this information like this. And this view can be ignored if it's not needed. It's available for us when we need it, but if it's not needed, we can simply ignore it. So we'll click back on, for example, our kitchen folder, our home folder here. Uh, we'd like to show you some basic editing steps here, and these I will explain less and, and let you follow through the online manual to find. But if we choose, for example, the multiple lines command, we can click from a point to another point. And you'll notice that when I get near these points, the software shows us a box in this case, which is representing the end point of this line. What this is indicating is, even if I'm not exactly on the end of this line, the box indicates that it will snap to that point. So you see, even if I hover my mouse back this way, my new line will be created from this end point to this point here. I'm done with the multiple lines command, so I'll click Confirm, Cancel, Escape, or right click to end that function. I'll now choose Offset here, and we'll bring this forward by a distance of 1.75. Selecting that line, moving it forwards, again clicking confirm or cancel to end the command. And I'll right click and choose delete to delete my original line there. Many of these functions operate in a loop, meaning if I choose the connect function here, which is similar to the fillet or sharp fillet function, depending on what other softwares you might be learning from. I'll choose connect here. You'll see in the command window, it says connect endpoints. Select the first element. I'll choose this element here, and my second element will be this line on the left side. The two elements met together in this corner here. I don't have to click perfectly at the corner. Again, those object snaps ensure that we're close enough to those areas, and it will combine those together. But you'll notice, after I complete that, it now prompts me for a new first element. We'll simply click on another line, and another line, and continue the function until we're done with it. So once we've completed using the function, we can press Confirm, Cancel, Escape, or right click to end that particular command. So I encourage you to explore these files and, and if you haven't done so already, please contact us or follow the links in your emails to schedule a software and hardware orientation session where our FlexiJet support team will be very happy to walk you through this and some other example files showing you around FlexiJet Stone, getting you comfortable and ready for your FlexiJet to arrive.